Hello, this is the fourth lecture of a series of lectures on conservation of energy. In this lecture, we will concentrate on conservation of energy itself. The law of conservation of energy says that the total energy of a system stays the same unless an outside force does work on it. The work kinetic energy theorem that we've learned about is the unless portion of the law. For example, a ball that's thrown gains kinetic energy only because there's an outside force acting on it. Otherwise, its total energy would stay the same. Now, in this lecture, we're going to consider just situations where there's no outside forces acting. The total mechanical energy of a system is the sum of its potential energy and kinetic energy. So what this means in, in terms of the law of conservation of energy is that the sum of potential and kinetic energy always stays the same when there's no outside forces acting on an object. So consider tossing a ball upwards. Initially, the ball has only kinetic energy, but as it rises, it slows down and it loses kinetic energy. At the same time, it's gaining height and gaining potential energy. When you add those together, you get a total energy that stays constant throughout the whole trajectory. Conservation of energy makes kinematics problems so much easier. Consider these keys. So if we look at the total energy at any time that the key is falling, we see that the potential energy and kinetic energy added together stays the same. At the beginning, when it's at its highest point, it has mainly potential energy and no kinetic energy. Then it starts to fall and it picks up speed, but it loses height. So by the time it gets to the floor right before impact, all of its potential energy has turned into kinetic energy. So using conservation of energy, we can say that the potential energy at the top is equal to the kinetic energy at the bottom. Plugging in our two formulas, we see that mass cancels. That's a good thing, because we've learned that things fall at the same rate of acceleration regardless of their mass. So simplifying, we get the velocity squared equals 2gh. So let's say that the keys are dropped from a height of 10 meters, and we want to know how fast they're traveling. Plugging into the formula, we're going to find 2 times gravity, 10 meters per second squared, times the distance, or height, 10 meters. Take the square root of it, and we get a speed of 14 meters per second. Projectile problems are so much easier. A baseball is thrown up at 20 meters per second. How high does it reach? Once again, when it's thrown up, at the beginning it has kinetic energy. When it gets to the top, it has potential energy. MGH equals 1 half mv squared. Plugging in, we get a height of 40 meters. Roller coasters depend on conservation of energy as well. Take example this roller coaster. Most of the energy at point A is in the form of potential energy at the very beginning of motion because it's not moving. If there are no outside forces acting on the roller coaster, it doesn't matter what it does in between. At point A, it can go no higher than that height any, at any time during the ride. So it could go up, it could possibly go all, go through B and C and end up exactly at point D, but it could not go any higher than that. Now, when you add friction into the system, then what happens is that some of that energy is turned into heat that it had at point A. So that decreases the maximum height that it can go up at. 